very much of, of what you were talking about, David, uh, where you're like, what if we had, had shoes that had like an elevator shoe, so it was actually two inches taller, so nobody saw, but it'll make me walk a bit funny. It's like, okay, sure. And then that type of development is great because you are there with the actor figuring out what is needed for this character. And uh, yeah, there, there's no worse moment than somebody saying, oh, I'm really aware of, of these shoes. They're slowing me down. They're not fitting right. The, the, I guess, ideal outcome is to have somebody who can do the same show 10 times a week and not think about what they're wearing on their feet. I think also, I just want to go back to that. Whole, the, to me, as a designer, the sound of footfall is really important. And so I know sometimes, for instance, I've been doing plays where um, someone has to look like they're wearing a dress shoe, but it has to be silent. So you have to find a dress shoe that looks like it's got a soft sole so that you won't hear the sound. Or the, uh, when I'm designing a set, that I, that, like the sound of hollow risers makes me totally demented. And so I will often try to, in the set, specify materials that will help abs absorb the sound if, if it has to look like they're walking on a floor like this, for instance, and they're walking in high heels, then, you know, you, you, do you want to hear that sound or not? And you might, or you might not. But to me, it's very important to think ahead about what the nature of that sound is. And each character has the potential to make a different kind of sound. If they're going up a flight of stairs, uh, you know, what is that sound going to be like? And do you need to build the floor? Or do you need to carpet the floor to absorb the sound? Or do you need to enhance the sound? But, but it, it's, you know, if you're doing shows that have music in them, you can't really tell anyway because the music is covering it. But if they're just, if they're shows where it's language all the way through and there is a lot of physical movement, um, it does become a really important issue and how, and, and, and you just have to make the choice and think about it. So if you do have all the guys in business suits and the wives in, uh, you know, lovely, if the, the, the play you're, you're inventing. My play. Uh, your play. <laughs> it's um, really shaping up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then, then, then what will they sound like as they move around? And how will that affect the choices you make for the footwear you give them? And if they all have to look like they're wearing high heels and dress shoes and you want them to be silent, then do you change the surface that they're walking on? Or, or worse, like it, it's not at all unusual to say, okay, this is what happens. I need to hear you come out, walk on from stage left. I want to hear click, 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 click. The man's shoes come out. You stop. And then I want to hear the lady's heels come. Mm -hmm. Click, 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 click. Until we see the silhouette behind the door there. But then in the black, oh, you guys have your too noisy. <laughs> but then what you might do if the silhouette there is decide where the carpet is right. and decide where the hard floor is. So that if it's something that the audience isn't seeing, they may walk on on the hard floor, but they may escape on a little strip of carpet so that they can muffle. Yeah. And go, you know, um, Je Jeff has talked about orcs having to backflip on, on a, an elevator, but something you touched on just now is the, again, the strange, the, na the strange nature of this thing that we do. If you can imagine yourself walking down that staircase um, and no one down here, that's one thing. But probably if, if any of you arrived late and you saw that there were about 100 people here, you're probably a little bit more self-conscious walking down the staircase. <laughs> If you did in Act 1, a sort of just normal walk down the staircase, you're doing that eight times a week. And if in Act 2, when you find out that the businessmen are here, you're so excited to see them. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of skip down the stairs and you jump the last three. That's an action that you're going to repeat eight times a week, minimum. And, and accidents do and will happen, and the, the strangest things happen. Pe people, as in life, you know, people tend to hurt their knee or their back or their arm do the, the weirdest things. I, I, I slipped when I stood up out of my chair or I tripped on the last, I tripped as I was going up the stairs, you know, that, that kind of thing, because we're doing two things at once very often on stage. And if you're not confident in your footwear, this is looping way back to where we began, it's a disaster. I think an, an, on that note, uh, a very important part of the process, in fact, probably a major part of the process, initially when somebody like Sean comes with her drawings, the first thing, that I'll do with you know whoever whoever else is relevant in the in the process depending on the show is not think as much about 
what the shoe is going to look like in the end, but first figure out what all the problems are, are going to be leading up to it, and then figuring out how to make it all come together. Like, for an example, and again, tying to your question of odd and unusual footwear, uh, I was working on a show down in Las Vegas, uh, must have been about three years ago, and what the designer wanted was a guy in a pair of boots, and the show was a water show, so there's a uh, number one problem. Can't use any leather because leather in water is going to rot after a couple of weeks. So there's number one problem. It's a big guy. He was standing on stage, so, and it, the, the look of the shoe is kind of like a Doc Martin. So it went through about 10 prototypes of what this guy could do. He's also a very physical guy. He had to do some dance moves. There's another problem. So they have to be split sole, and they can't be made out of leather. And, oh yeah, he's wet, so you have to be very careful about what the bottom of the shoe is going to be. There's number, problem number three. Start working through prototypes, start figuring out looks. Finally, probably after about, I don't even know how many months, and probably about a dozen prototypes, found something that worked, put it on, on this performer, put him out on stage. The director saw it, he said, okay, this look I love. We want all of these people in it. So suddenly, <laughs> and I kid you not, we went, it was a month, one month before premiere, we went from having one person in this pair of shoes to having 45 people in the shoes. And now they also needed to be quick changeable because they had about 10 seconds to get into them. They had to be able to not only stand in them, but now swim in them. And there were people who were doing 150 foot high dive in them. There were people doing triple backflips off of nets, diving into a pool of water. And so suddenly your, your three initial problems have become three dozen <laughs> problems. But you just kind of dig in and go, OK, how do we do this? And you get a boot that, you know, if you look at it on the table, it looks like a black Doc Martin with a red stripe up the front and up the back. But you look at all the all the criteria that were involved for this one pair of shoe, and it's unbelievable. And then uh, it was made out of a synthetic material that I found uh, in Italy. Fortunately, I had the, the uh, ability to actually do all the workshopping of the show in Belgium. The, the company was based out of Belgium. So the access to materials, thank goodness, was much easier than here, where I could actually call up people in Italy and France and just get materials and swatches and do some experimenting. But uh, there's a company in Italy that uh, developed a synthetic leather for car interiors. And we started using that, and uh, it works beautifully. And, but <laughs> it was quite a process getting to that. And now we make like hundreds a year. <laughs> so when you folks go see a play, do you see the shoes? You probably do, but you <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, it's 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 what I do. It's it's all I see. I was uh, I was joking with a friend of mine because I, I uh, Tuesday night I was in Las Vegas. I was watching a show called Zumanity, which is a Cirque du Soleil production. I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with it, but it's it's touted as being the sensual side of Cirque du Soleil. So it's a Cirque show, but very sexually driven. Lots of nudity. Lots of frolicking, uh, as well as all the cool acrobatic stuff. And I swear, I was sitting there, second row center, I was the only person watching the shoes the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, I, I have trouble focusing on show shows. <laughs> <laughs> but like, when you, what, what do you find when you're seeing a, watching a show? I mean, I hope, not just the shoes, but the. Well, you know, I hope when I go to I hope when I go to the theater that I I see the entire thing. I don't want to be if I'm looking at the details that relate to the work I do myself. If I'm looking at the set or I'm looking at the costumes or I'm looking at how things work, I think well, I'm you know I shouldn't be doing that because I sh I hope I will be taken in to the performances and the story and, and the whole point of why they're doing it. Um, however, I would be lying if I don't, if, you know, if I didn't say I don't sit there often and go, now would I have done it differently? <laughs> um, so when I don't do that, it, I love it because that means I'm actually really engaged in the, in the evening and that's what I hope the theater will do for me. 
Yeah, but it's almost an identical answer, except to say that you, um, maintenance is an issue too, right? And if you're doing, if you're doing my businessman show, um, <laughs> the, the, and, and the CEO of this of this company, uh, as you know, like he, he's he's a very natty guy, and if over the course of eight shows, because he's got that moment where he kneels, um, there's there's a scuff on the side of the shoe that didn't get uh, addressed, um, you know, between performances. I notice that it drives me crazy. <laughs> This man would not walk around in those scuffed shoes. <laughs> I think that's actually a really good point that we haven't touched on, which is that it's not just one performance, it's many, 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 many performances. So that, for instance, uh, I don't know if you have this when you're dealing with all those wet shoes, but I know as a costume designer, again, if there's two show days, you sometimes have to have duplicate shirts because one has to be in the laundry while the other one is being worn in the evening and there's not enough time in between the shows to completely do all the maintenance um, or that uh, you know often there are there there will be situations where dramatically you need to have duplicates of things because this person came in clean the businessman the next scene was after he'd fallen into the dirty puddle so he has to come in looking totally the opposite so you have to have the duplicate suit the duplicate shirt the duplicate shoes that are all covered in mud and and even the maintenance of those I mean it's that that the wear and tear of doing repeated performances on everything that the audience sees is phenomenal I think yeah, uh, absolutely and if, when you think about you know in in your day-to-day -day life the most beaten up piece of your wardrobe is going to be your shoes because you look at what you put them through versus you know, a shirt a jacket whatever and uh, it's really hard to keep shoes looking good. And that's, again, part of the process, part of choosing the right material, making a good pair of shoes is something, okay, is this show going to be running for a week or is it going to be running for the next 10 years? And if it's going to be running 10 years, what can I do to make it let these shoes last a year of that? So without starting to look bad, because there, there's nothing worse. And you know, I, I would be hypercritical about shoes just because it's it's what I think about all the time, but uh, there's nothing worse than seeing examples like somebody, a very nicely dressed gentleman in a beaten up pair of shoes because the show's been running for six months, or seeing a beautiful, and you see this often, uh, but okay, taking a step back, one of the problems with shoes that I will completely agree to is the cost. They're expensive things. Often you need to cheat because you can't afford to always have shoes made, but there's nothing worse than having somebody in a full period dress wearing modern shoes. Or you go down, you know, you see a show of some beautiful extravagant costumes and they're wearing Capizio dance shoes. It's like, things like that drive me crazy because it's just like, oh, come on. It wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been that much. You could have done something, at least, you know, blue rhinestones onto the dance shoes or something. <laughs> but, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, it, I, when I notice shoes, I don't mind noticing shoes unless it's that, when it's just like something is off. Because it should be, like you say, the costume, the actor working together, being a unified thing. And when there's something, you know, I'm, it would be the same as if somebody came out, I guess, with the wrong period of hat. It's just like, you know, no, this isn't right. And even if you're not noticing the shoes specifically, there's something, even subconsciously, where it's like, okay, there's something wrong. <laughs> That's my opinion. I think we're gonna go to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite pet peeve on that too is that when you do get shoes rubbered, um, the, 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 the stuff that they use to rubber at the bottom tends to be along the front part and then under the heel. And I hate it when actors do that and I see the space in the middle. So I always make the wardrobe people block everything because I can't bear, it's like seeing the hardware. It just makes me crazy. But, Yep. Yeah. Do you use any, excuse me, do you use any software in the development of these shoes from an engineering perspective, like CAD CAM or something of that nature? I don't. I, I do know of people who do, but I'm very much uh, you know, a traditionalist in, in my process. Uh, the only thing I use my computer for, other than to keep myself organized, is to communicate with people, and that's 
that's the only part where really anything 